got a number of supercapacitors which I've charged with small solar panels over, uh, about a day ago. I recorded the um, the voltage at which they got up to um, at the time that I took them out of the windowsill yesterday, and I'm going to compare the voltage now, see how much uh, voltage has dropped on the on the various types of supercapacitor. So I've got some a uh, couple of supercapacitors in series here for to produce about five volts. Uh, and then I've got them in parallel, a couple of 10, 10 farad capacitors in um, parallel to, to charge up to 2.7 volts. I've got a, a larger supercapacitor here, which is uh, 120 farad. Um, it, it didn't charge all the way up yesterday, but I want to see how much the voltage has dropped on that one. And then at the back, I've got uh, a huge 500 farad supercapacitor. Uh, and I wanted to find out how much the voltage drops over over a day. So to see how um, useful the actual supercapacitors are uh, for uh, long term, sort of keeping the charge and powering uh, low power devices. So I'm going to start off with this one. Uh, it's a couple of 10 farad capacitors in series. So going up to about 5 volts. Uh, and make is nano. Uh, and these, uh, from my experience, have been quite good in the past. And yesterday, the voltage that they charged up to was 5.03 volts. So they've lost 0 0.03 of a volt overnight. Over about a day's period, they've lost about 0 0.03 of a volt. So that's really good. They really retain the, the charge well. Next, I've got uh, these. There's, it's the same capacitor, but this time they're in parallel. So they, they only charge up to uh, 2.7 volts. And it's 10 farad uh, again, and so the, um, and the ma manufacturer is Nano, and so I expect a similar result for this. So yesterday when I charged them, they charged up to 2.63 volts, and so they they are now at 2.6 volts. So again, 0 0.03 of a volt drop, which is very consistent uh, for the capacitors, uh, and they're very I find them very useful. So next is this a bigger capacitor. So this is a uh, Elna, uh, oh a Dyno cap, Dyno cap, uh, 2.7 volts again, 120 farad. Uh, and this one, because it's only on a small um, solar panel, uh, didn't charge up fully yesterday. Uh, it only charged up to 1.15 volts. So see how well this has maintained its charge. This is down to about 0.8 volts, so it's lost about 0.4 of a volt in about a day. So that that um, didn't do too well, and this is why I'm making this video, because when I got these uh, bigger capacitors, I thought I'll get some bigger capacitors, because uh, the, the, these smaller ones seem to be doing so well, and they powered my device uh, for without, without sun for, for weeks, just, uh, just maintaining the charge, but... These bigger ones didn't do so well. I don't know if it's the make or if it's because of the size, but I wanted to do a, a bit of a comparison. Then I got some really big capacitors, so I went for 500 farad, 2.7 volts again. Uh, this make is green cap. Uh, this, uh, I put this one on a much bigger solar panel because I wanted to make sure it charged up well. So yesterday it charged up to 2.71 volts. So pretty much fully charged. If I take a measurement now, uh, so it's at 2.5 volts, uh, so 2.51 say, uh, so it's dropped about 0.2 of a volt, so it's, it did better than than uh, the this capacitor, but these small ones seem to maintain the charge really well, uh, they seem to be able to maintain the ch charge for weeks, whereas if you look at the way that these drop off by about 0.2 of a volt, It'd probably be good for a week, I guess, of useful voltage, but um, much more than that, uh, not really. So, but I'm this this capacitor will do what I what I need. I'm not so happy about these ones. These ones don't don't seem to maintain the charge. Now I don't know whether it's just the materials used or the manufacturer that that produces them, but they seem to vary from uh, manufacturer to manufacturer as to how well they maintain their charge. Lastly, I also use these small solar panels to charge up these nickel metal hydride batteries uh, and that's that's still an ideal solution for if you have long periods of sun then long periods of no sun 
uh, it, they can maintain a, a charge. And the small solar panels, they basically trickle charge them. Uh, so you can just connect the solar panel across the two cells uh, and it just keeps it trickle charged up. So this is the project which, I've, which I'm powering with the 2.7 volt super capacitors, which are solar charged. So there's no, there's no batteries or anything in there. If I just take that off. So the battery compartment's empty. If I press a button, um, it should wake up the, the uh, project. And this is all being powered from 2.7 volts from the supercapacitors. Uh, and this runs for, for weeks without any, um, without any light. Once the supercapacitors have charged up, they, they maintain their charge for, for weeks. Uh, and after a minute, it shuts off the screen and everything for low power mode. And I wake it up, say, once or twice a day. And, and it will just go on uh, and it will maintain... Um, all its settings and everything so it's very handy for to power a very low powered device which is it's a PIC microcontroller and uh, an LCD display uh, which is a Nokia 5110 display so finally just to comment on how I'm charging these capacitors um, so I, I have a solar panel here and it goes through you can vary the, resi ver um, the resistance of this resistor depending on how much power your solar panel generates uh, but I have, because they're, they're only really low power solar panels, I've just got a, a wire link in here, it's just a zero ohm resistor. I'm using a Zener diode, which is 2.4 volt Zener diode. And I found that with Zener di diodes, they usually give like a few points of extra voltage above what their rating is. So on the small solar panel, I was getting 2.6 volts. And on the large solar panel, I was getting 2.7 volts, which was ideal for, for charging the capacitors. Uh, that may not be necessarily 100% reliable, so I don't, I don't recommend using this method for charging them. But it's a nice little neat method if, which doesn't require, uh, require very many components. And it's very cheap to do. And then I've got a barrier diode here, which is a, a germanium uh, diode, shock key diode, uh, which just stops any charge once it's in the capacitors going back into the uh, solar panel. So it stops them discharging. And then I've got here the two 10 farad capacitors uh, in parallel to generate the 2.7 volts charged current. And then when I'm discharging, I go for a 10 ohm resistor just to make sure, because they've got very little internal resistance. And if you short that out, then it, it will just go pop probably really loudly. And, uh, or it might even burn you. Um, so I've got a little limiting resistor there before I take it out to use the power. And then in parallel, uh, I just have the capacitors in parallel, but the, the circuit in series, sorry. Uh, but the circuit is still the same that I used. This is to generate the about five volt power. And I use a, a different Zener diode. So I have a, a one, uh, 5.1 volt Zener diode on that circuit.